Good afternoon. Can you all hear me? I've got my, there we go, my Taylor mic microphone on. Taylor mic mic on. Um, it's lovely to see you all here this afternoon. Thank you for the warm welcome. It's a bit too warm, isn't it? But um, last time I was here doing your all-age service, um, you guys, if you can remember, helped me with a problem. I had lots of objects, and you guys had to tell me what they had in common. Does anybody remember that? Any of the adults remember that? Russell remembers that. Thank you. And Carrie. Good. Two people. And what they had all in common is they were all prizes. And I thought to myself, I've had a few problems at home recently. I'll bring them to the Hillbank kids because they're clever and they'll help me out. So I've brought my family. No, that's, they're not my problem. <laughs> Slow burner, that one. Um, I've brought some objects and maybe you guys can help me work out what's wrong with them. And if you know me, <clears throat> some of you know me pretty well, you'll know I'm not really that technical or that good with practical stuff. So, I've got this light here, right? And I've changed the bulb, and the clip's broken, but I'm not worried about that. And when I work the switch, nothing happens, and I can't work out why. Uh, yeah, we go on the front. Do you know why it's not working? I'm not plugged there. What do you mean I'm not plugged there? Like oh, this? No, it's a skipping rope, is it not? No. Oh. Is it not like a skipping rope plug thing? No, okay. So that's a plug. Oh, look. It's a plug. I'm from Arbroath, and electricity is pretty new to us, so I've not worked out yet. Oh, look at that! See, I knew if I came here, you guys would help me out. So I have to plug it in there, right? Good, one thing sorted. See, you're on a roll. Right, second thing, I had to put that light up. So I got my drill out. My Bosch drill. Yeah, it has to go on the wall. So I got my drill out and I got my nail things, whatever you call them. And I was like trying to get them in and my drill thing's not working. And I don't think it's a hammer. I'm not fully sure, is it a hammer? No. Uh, the Uyghur on the denim. Do you know what's wrong with it? It needs a battery. Oh, well, that might... That's a, something came with it. This. This came with it. Is that the battery? Oh, I thought that was like a paperweight to hold my papers down. So that goes on... Oh, all right, that goes in there. And here's hoping I brought a battery that's got a charge on it. We don't have electricity in our bro, so... Oh, look at that. Brilliant. So I can now put my light on my wall. The final thing, this is my son's one. He's been bugging me because he's got this Batmobile and apparently it used to zip across the floor when you pushed it, but I don't know. It's not working. I don't know anything about cars. It's way over my head. I don't know anything about that. So, yeah, do you know a good mechanic? Uh, he, he needs wheels. It needs wheels. Oh, that might make sense, because there was some stuff that came with it. <laughs> How many wheels do you think it needs? Four. 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 Depends what garage you go to. <laughs> One, two, three, four. You see, you can count as well. Let's see if it works. Ah, that's better. Fantastic. So, I needed to connect my light to the electricity, connect my battery to my drill, connect my wheels. Right, really tough one. I'll tell you a story. My neighbor's got a big apple tree. He doesn't have an apple tree. Um, and it's got a branch overhangs, and my kids eat apples all the time, about three a day, each of them. And I thought to myself, I'm going to cut a branch off his apple tree and I'm going to keep it in our kitchen. And that way we've got an unlimited supply of apples. We don't have to go outside and pick them. And so I did that, I got my salt, <laughs> cut off a branch from his apple tree, put it in the kitchen, but the apples aren't grown anymore. Now, I don't think I plug it in, do I? No. no. I don't think it takes batteries. No, I don't think it needs wheels. But, eh? It's not stuck on the tree. 
oh, mate, we've got Monty here. Yeah, so it's not stuck on the tree. So because I've taken it off the tree, it's not going to grow? Yeah. Oh, so what am I going to do with this then? Spin it. Recycle it. <laughs> what bin does this go in? Anybody got a purple bin? Blue bin? Okay. Yeah, I could probably try and do something with it. The dog will probably get it. We've got a dog at home. Um, and then uh, you could just burn it. Okay, so because I took off a tree, it's not going to grow anymore. So it's pretty much dead then, is it? Yeah. Oh, well. No more apples. Got to go back to Asda and buy apples. But, you know, that's pretty good. You're all pretty clever, and I knew you guys would sort it out. Um, and actually, that reminds us of the verse that we need to look at today. And I'm only going to be like five minutes, because I know you're all desperate to get your prizes. And today's verse, the adults have been doing the I am's. So in the Bible, Jesus says, I am the such and such true in life. Yep, I am the door. That's brilliant. And today's is talking about a vine. Now, I'm not sure... Which button I press? Oh, it's on. There we go. And this is today's verse, uh, which we've already read. And it says this. This is Jesus speaking. And Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire. And that's what our verse is today. So we've already spoken about a branch, which has just got to get chucked away and withered. And we're looking at not an apple tree, but Jesus is talking about a vine, a grapevine. Now, you don't really get grapes in this country, but that's what a grapevine looks like. It's like a mini tree. It's not quite a bush. It's not quite a tree, so it's called a grapevine. And Jesus uh, talks about two things. He talks about the branches, and he talks about the vine, and these are the two things we're going to quickly look at. And in the verse, he says that we are the branches, and that's the branches there, with the grapes on them, that's you and me, and he talks about the vine, and that's what Jesus says. Jesus says, I am the vine. So we're going to quickly look at what a vine is, and what a branch is, and by that point, we should be sussed on what this verse means. So, a vine... A few things that are important about a vine or an apple tree trunk. Firstly, it's the first thing that's there. If you plant a seed for an apple, an apple tree, or a seed for a grape vine, or however you grow vines, I don't know. But if you plant it, the first thing that grows is not going to be the branches. The first thing that grows is the, the trunk, yeah, the roots in the tree. That's the first thing that grows. The vine and the tree, that is the first thing that grows. And that reminds us that God was there at the start, before all things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He was there first, and that's right. Secondly, well, the tree and the vine provides lots of things that the branches need. And you've thought about that. It provides security and strength because it's got the roots in the tree, doesn't it? The roots right down, and if you shake it, it shouldn't move. I get do, 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 shake the tree. I can't remember the song. Anyway, it's lost over y'all. The roots go in the ground and the tree stays firm. And that's like Jesus. He is our security if we trust him. And there's loads of verses in the Bible about how God is our rock, our refuge, our strength. There's Bibles about do not be dismayed for he's with you. You've sung it already. We have stories about the foolish builder and the wise builder. Do you know that story about building your house on the rock? Well, that's like Jesus. He is the rock. He is our root. He is our tree because he is planted and we can trust in him and find security and strength. And secondly, most importantly, it gives life, doesn't it? If you didn't have the trunk of the tree or the vine of the grapes, you wouldn't have any life. The branches would sit on the floor and they would just rot and nothing would grow. They bring life. And there's a verse in the Bible that says in John 10:10 10, 10, that Jesus has come to give us life. And not just any old life. He's come to give us life to the full. Now, an interesting thing, you guys have been going through the I am's of the Bible. I think this is your last one. 
So you should have done already, I am the bread of life. And then you notice there was, I am the light. And it goes on to say, you should not walk in darkness, but we'll have the light of life. And then you've got, I am the door. And that's where we get uh, that verse from, that um, I am the door, that the thieves will come and destroy, but I have come to give life and life to the full. And then you would have looked at, I am the shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep so that they can live. And then you've got, I am the resurrection and the life. And then you would have had, I am the way, the truth and the life. So they all have that in common. All the I ams are all about life. And it's only through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross that we can experience life and life to the full. So that's the vine. That's the important part. That's Jesus and that's his role. But what are the branches? The verse tells us that we are the branches. Well, you only get two types of branches. No matter what tree, bush, you get ones that are attached to the tree and are living and you get ones that are dead. And that's it. And that's kind of the same in life when it comes to our spiritual life. We're either alive in Christ and are followers of Jesus or we're dead in our sins. And it tells us in the Bible that you were dead in your transgressions and sins. And also in Romans, it tells us, count yourself dead to sin, but alive in Christ. Does anybody know or can tell me what sin is? You're all pretty clever. We boy in the blue shirt. Yeah. Yeah, you. Sin is something that takes us away from God. Excellent. Yes, sin is the things that we do which are displeasing and rebellion against God. And each one of us has sin in our lives. Even the old people at the back, they've done wrong things. Even me up here, I've done wrong things. We've all sinned. It tells us in the Bible that we have all sinned. And because we've all done wrong things, we've been cut off from the tree. We've been cut off from God. We've been cut off from him. And we're left alone and we're left to die but the amazing great thing is that's not the way we can be left because Jesus Christ came down to die for us and we can become branches that are alive I'm not sure alive branches is grammatically correct but we can become alive if we trust in Jesus there's a brilliant verse in the Bible you maybe know it John 3 16 for God so loved Well done. Are you sure you don't go to Sunday school somewhere else? So here you learned that. I'm joking. Uh, well done. You know John 3:16 and a brilliant verse, and it says, "For God so loved the world. Doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, how intelligent you are, where you've come from, what you've done, what you've seen. Doesn't matter. God sent His Son to die for you, so that you no longer can be a dead branch that's rotten away, but that you can be a live branch with lots of fruit." And if you trust Jesus, you can be a part of the vine. You can have that security. You can have that hope. You can have that eternal life and life to the full that we spoke about. And if you trust in Jesus and have accepted him, then it goes on and tells us that we are to bear much fruit. Like this. Look at them grapes. Look amazing. And as Christians, we are to bear fruit. And we might think to ourselves, well, bearing fruit means bringing people to church and getting them to know Jesus. And yeah, that's bearing fruit. But it also tells us in Galatians chapter 5 about the fruits of the Spirit. Do you know these? Yes. Yes. Oh, well done. Can you name them all? Oh, they're on the board anyway. There's nine of them. Uh, And the... Eh? They're all there. The fruits of the Spirit should be evident in our life. So people should see the fruits of the Spirit in our life if we follow Jesus. And this is a challenge for us all, especially as adults, because... I'm not sure how many of these words people would use to describe me. I'm not sure how many words they would describe to use you. So as we read them, think about if these were words that are used to describe you. So you've got love, uh, joy, peace, patience. Maybe not got that one. Uh, Kindness, goodness, uh, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Are these things that are evident that people can see in your life? These are the fruits that we have to grow in our lives. And when people see them in this dark world, they see something different. And they see like the fruit there and you're like, oh, I want to know. I want to get some of them grapes. And when they see these things in our life, they're like, oh, 
I want to get to know them more. In this world of darkness and despair, they've got kindness and they've got love and they've got peace. And I want to know them more. And we can then bring them to Jesus. And so that is the fruits of the Spirit. And we need to aim to have them in our lives. And if you go on and read the verse, it tells us how we do it. And it's by abiding in Christ, by reading God's Word every day and praying to Him. And in doing so, we can bear much fruit and live in Him. And so we'll just quickly look at the verse again about our branch. And it says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Uh, such branches are picked up and thrown in the fire and burned. And so, two types of branches, the living branch and the one that's dead. And the question is, where are you today? And if you're a dying branch, it's not too late to be a living branch and to trust uh, in the Lord Jesus. Thank you for your help. You guys are absolute geniuses. Maybe next time I'll bring some more problems to fix. Maybe you can help me with my kids who don't always listen to me. Anybody out with that? No, I'm lying. I'm lying. Um, right, I'm going to hand over now to Rosemary, I think. And thank you all for listening so well.